we still go through a lot of paperwork. And facilities management is key because we, we see that a lot of paper, let's say the service reports, you find the technician service you know, coming to your site, signing off on the reports, quite a lot of things happen, right? And all those happens out of paper. And then you go back to your accounts division, you have bunches of paper because he needs to process the invoices, right? And this keeps happening. And this is where we need to push forward for bringing technology into our daily lives. Now, what's disruption? It's purely radical change to an existing industry or market due to technological innovation. And this is called the wheel of disruption. I'm not going to take you through boring theory, but again, it's purely about payments. Today, a few years back, we used to use cash a lot. Today, we use Apple Pay, we use Google Pay, etc. Right? We use wearables. Today, most of the things get done through an app using your mobile phones. Right? Uh, now we are talking about virtual AI. We are talking about AR. IoT is the talk of the town. Right? Quite a lot of improvements have happened in this space. Again, so why don't we, as FMs, adopt these? Is a question. As facilities management, we have to reduce the paper. Why disrupt? Is a question. Again, efficiency in terms of man, that's manpower, optimization of manpower, sustainability initiatives. Same thing goes with material and machines. Now, in order to optimize, in order to bring uh, you know, efficiency into what we are doing, it's essential that we need data, and we need to collect them. And if you're not going to talk about, let's say, the conventional method, so you have the first question, why? Let's say something happened in your building, there's a water leak, you need to identify why, right? If you're going to go back with the trail of paper, that's going to be very difficult for you. Where? Typically, where's the location, right? Who is being do doing the service? So some of your technicians have actually gone ahead and done certain maintenance. You need to identify who. When was it done? What has been done? And typically, who are you going to report this to? Either your manager or to your client. To make your life easier, today we have CAFM. A lot of companies use CAFM, right? So you talk to any FM company, they always talk about computerized facilities management solutions. And today we are talking about IoT, we are talking about AI. A lot of companies have started using GPS, right? To track your people. Again, using the CAFM, you can track where, what sort of job you have done. Again, real-time logging, so you don't have to wait for end of the month to get your service reports. You know exactly when the service has been done. You get an update, right? The service has been completed. Again, for quality assurance and quality control, right? And all these make sure that your SLAs and KPIs with the customer is delivered. So now, the whole idea about putting this together is a lot of us, we implement solutions on silos. We pick and choose. We take CAFM, we sometimes use uh, GPS, we sometimes use staff monitoring or HRM solutions. And some of you, I mean, I think so Tarek as well as somebody else was speaking earlier regarding uh, integrating all these things into the same platform. So this is what we're talking about. In, in MEP, we, we generally say that you have an FCU and you have a chiller, right? Both of them are assets. But once they are put together, they call as a system. That's your air conditioning system. Similarly, if you're going to use technology in your day-to-day -day lives, it's about ensuring that all these gaps are fulfilled and put together as a system. I'll talk about a bit about my journey with these systems. What we have done is we had a traditional cafe, right? And what we did, we tried to interface it with our ERP. Because we, we always found there's a big gap between your accounting guys and the, the, the operatives on the site. So we are trying to bridge the gap by integrating both of them with regarding GPS, because answering the second question, where? So we went ahead with mobile forms with geotagging. We have put in solutions for people tracking. Today it's available. You install an app on your mobile phone, everything is available. Technician app, so that they don't have to fill up the paper. They have to use their mobile phones to tick the box, and you get the message. Vehicle tracking. Again, these are some examples. You have geotagging, asset tagging. For example, you have a machine that's being shifted from site to site. We normally use, again, paper. You have a gate pass system. 
So when you're removing it from one site or your store, the gatekeeper or the storekeeper signs off saying that it's a gate pass. It goes to the next site, sometimes it gets lost in transition, right? This is where geo-asset tagging helps you to identify your, your priced assets. Indoor and outdoor location tracking. Your staff, you have big communities. We, we work on big communities as well. And we have identified that understanding and tracking these staff definitely makes sense because it's going to help you reduce supervision because you know where they are. You can identify, again, collaborating with your HRM solution, which is your human resource management. This employee can check in at one particular location, complete the entire cycle of his job, and check out. You have the full records. If a customer asks where your staff is, here you go. That's the record. Today, there's, there's a lot of GPS-based technology where you use, use beacons. You can track the entire activity inside the building. For example, a cleaning staff, where he goes at particular intervals can be tracked. Same thing with security solutions. If you have a big community where your security has to go around different locations, he can be tracked using his mobile phone itself. So we know exactly where the incident happened. All the timestamps are available. Incidents can be recorded. Issues can be highlighted. We don't have to use WhatsApp. What results? I'm not going by figures, but I've taken again because I mentioned about sustainability. Now, what are the three pillars of sustainability? It's social, environment, and economic. So, but from, you look at from a social perspective, you're talking about more involvement from staff, collaboration, employee productivity, increasing employee productivity, preventing fraud, right, and reduced in-person supervision. So these sort of technologies help us from a social perspective to boost up the morale of the people, to boost up the productivity, productivity levels of the people. Now from an economic perspective, it gives you reduced cost. It helps you in reducing your maintenance of fuel, maintenance of your vehicles as well as fuel, because you don't have waste. You can find out if somebody's really, really doing naughty things while on the job, right? And controlled overtime. Now, most of the FM companies does lose a lot of money on overtimes. Because if your people are not productive, he's going to stay. He's got a 12-hour shift out of which he's supposed to work for, let's say, 10 hours. And your staff is being idle in many positions, right? And your client is still unhappy that your job is not being done. So what is a company that you might do? Give him overtime or you put additional people, right? These sort of things has to be tracked. Uh, and again, for faster billing and justification, Optimized operation. So what do we, why do we do all these things in FM, right? What is your end result? Managing your contract, ensuring that your KPIs are met, right? For that, again, performance and better customer service. So again, from an economic perspective, this is important for your company as well as for your client. And from an environment perspective, you're talking about CO2 reduction as well as waste reduction. And most importantly, why I have got a ghost standing there with the basket is most of the things that we have talked about goes unseen. Nobody notices them in your day-to-day -day operation. And this is to be tracked. If you really have to work on it, we need data. Unless you have data by granular details, up to granular, you know, you go into details, you will not be able to track them and understand where you're losing money, which is called the ghost. He's taken away money from you. And now, what's the future for me? I'm working on, again, IOTs, making it much, much more convenient for staff to know what exactly the problem is, auto-ticketing, and from an integrated HRM, which is mobile-based attendance, which was earlier discussed as well, so that the staff, the reliability on going and fingerprinting can be reduced, where the supervisor can walk around take a picture, and the timestamp of his attendance will be there.